Hey everybody, it's Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop, LoneStarMopars.com. Pretty excited, not gonna lie, I've got something pretty cool for you here. And uh, if you are one of the many people moving your classic Muscle Air Mopar to EFI, you know one of the first things is either step one install the oxygen sensor or step one install the coolant temperature sensor coolant temperature sensor would be something just like this i've got in my hand this is holly part number 534-10 is roughly 33 bucks you can get these half that price uh, from pretty much anyone else but you gotta have the coolant temperature sensor it's a vital component for the efi right so phytech holly edelbrock fast whatever whatever route you go this is going to be one of the first things you have to do now you think simple enough what is that just 3 8 mpt no problem it is a problem and i'll tell you why you don't have unlimited real estate on your intake manifold and your water pump housing right there's only so many ports they're sized what they are uh you know a quarter three eighths five sixteenths three eighths Chances are you don't have an available 3 8 port and uh, if you do you're probably using that for a temperature gauge or perhaps you know a sensor for electric fans. Uh, there's a couple of people making the switch from carb to EFI for like all out dedicated race engines. In that case yeah maybe you've got a port available. For everyone else the vast majority of people I don't fall into that camp I'm kind of more of like the street brute crowd I guess. Everyone else, though, if you're going EFI, you're probably the type of person that also has air conditioning, heating. You want all the creature comforts and amenities that you would have in, say, a 2018 Challenger or 2018 Charger in your 69 Charger, your Duster, your Cuda, uh, whatever you're rocking from the 60s and 70s. You kind of expect it to perform and, you know, provide the same comforts as your late model daily driver. That's where that becomes a problem because again, all the ports are taken. You got to pull your intake, drill it. Most people wouldn't be comfortable doing that. You got to go to a machine shop. You got to wait on them to be available. Yada yada yada. You got to think at some point there's got to be a better way. Why isn't there just a good, clean installation for this? I don't have to ditch, you know, my AC. I don't want to give up my mechanical temperature gauge. I just need this CTS installed. Well, lucky for us, as more and more people jump into this, uh, one of those people happens to be Andy. You may know him as Andy F. Uh, if Andy F rings a bell, you're probably on a Mopar forum of some sort. Moparts, F-A-B-O, whatever it may be on. Uh, Andy F, he is an engineer, and lucky for us, he happens to be a Mopar fan. He's got a Coronet, kind of like his uh, test mule project car, and he has recently gotten into the... EFI, the self-learning stuff, right? That everyone's switching to, Phytech, Holly, so on and so forth. Uh, so with the latest iteration of the Sniper, that's what he's been playing around with. And of course, he gets to step one, step two of the install instructions, and it's install the CTS. Like many of us, he hit that point, and he's like, oh, you know, what do I do? You know, this isn't tapped right, I don't have available ports. I need to need somewhere to put the CTS. Well, I've teased this thing with this picture and a couple of other angles trying to get people to uh, guess it. As of right now, no one has guessed it. Uh, that's probably going to change by the time this goes live, but hey. And you think, well, what is this? You kind of got a hint of it, right? I'm spinning it around. If you think, uh, okay, we're talking EFI, CTS, that's, that's something for the water neck, right? Thermostat something or another. That is correct. This is a one inch water neck spacer why one inch well take a look at that that's your 3 8 uh, npt pipe thread you got a little cushion on either side and what is that for you ask well that is for your coolant temperature sensor now this is going to do two big things for us number one uh, it's going to obviously bring things up and allow for the cts to install but two it's going to relocate the thermostat to the top side now why is that important you can technically get by, and I've seen some people put the CTS in very strange locations that won't read accurately and will impact the performance adversely of their EFI, but they probably don't care if it's still running. But you want the coolant temperature sensor to read out just like you would want your water temperature gauge to read out, right? You don't want it reading, you know, halfway to the radiator. You don't want it reading in front of the radiator. You want it on the intake, essentially. That's what this is going to do, and it's going to allow us to locate the CTS underneath the thermostat. 
This is super simple, it's super practical, and it's going to be super effective and infinitely appreciated by anyone and everyone. If you've already done your EFI conversion, you're probably wishing you had this. If you haven't done your EFI conversion, or you're doing another one, or you're a shop owner that installs them, this is something you're going to buy and you're going to use on every install. So, uh, essentially the way this works, we take our coolant temperature sensor, it is tapped right here, it's kind of offset, which is actually pretty cool, and you simply thread it in. Once again, your thermostat's going to sit here, down here, just like with your water temperature gauge, you're going to have the same reading in theory, and it's going to allow your EFI to operate exactly as it is intended from the factory. And <laughs> that's a big deal. Now, in the duster, I would actually install it like this. Well, you know, if your engine's here, because the runners on the intake are actually kind of crowding it over here, I've got more space on this side. Since this is a simple one-inch billet uh, piece, it's machined nicely on both sides. And the charger, I've got a coil right here, vacant space here, boom, I simply flip it. Isn't that nice? <laughs> so, uh, once again, this is just super simple, and it's a very very much needed item brought to the market now uh, again AR engineering is where you can find this part this is uh, again Andy uh, if you if the name sounds familiar but you're maybe not on the forums it might be because you've seen or heard of his books uh, most recently he did the Mopar B body performance upgrades uh, that's pretty cool it kind of covers like everything in general brakes chassis suspension so on and so forth and then the other one that came out first that many, many of you, at least with big blocks, have probably read, is how to build max performance Mopar big blocks. Now, I want you to think back. That wasn't that long ago that I remember picking that up and reading it multiple times. Just in that time frame, the EFI thing has taken off. Phytech, whether you love them or hate them, the way that they entered the market and came in so competitively priced that's really when you saw people make the jump make the switch uh, a lot of those people have moved on to different brands some of them still swear by phytech well, when phytech shows up with 9.99 efi and there's many of us that would have paid 9.99 plus uh, for the carburetors we're running on our cars particularly when you get into dominator type stuff uh, oftentimes efi was the lesser priced option that forced holly it forced edelbrock it forced i guess fast hasn't really accommodated the price change but they're having to compete on other fronts is the main thing when somebody comes in and they just slash the price on stuff that was 2500 all these years and not really progressing that well that made a very competitive marketplace and that got more and more people making the switch <laughs> and subsequently just since i picked up this terminator stealth kit for the duster Things have advanced so much, I almost feel like that's outdated, and I don't even have it installed yet, right? I didn't run into some extenuating circumstances at work that limited my free time, but it's one of those things, man. Things change fast. <laughs> and uh, With that advent, uh, Andy's jumped in the sniper, which everyone was kind of jumping to that, you know, like, ah, oh, well, you know, Phytech, I've had some problems, heard a buddy didn't like it, I'm going to try the next cheapest thing, which was the sniper. Well, now the latest version of the sniper is pretty freaking advanced, especially for the price point. That's what Andy has been playing with. And, of course, he comes in, O2, CTS. Where does the CTS go, right? The O2 sensors, you know, you're like, yeah, well, I got that figured out. Uh, this solves the problem. Once again, if you've already done your EFI, this might be a piece that you pick up to kind of clean and tidy things up again. You got to think, if the engine's back here, and your radiator's up here, you know, where I'm moving my hand up and down, with that CTS oriented in this manner, that is going to provide for a cleaner installation, in my opinion. I would rather have this cast back, sort of in the shadows of the radiator hose, as opposed to just Frankenstein somewhere like little Christmas trees or Tahiti umbrellas, you know, all over the intake manifold. So, in my opinion, that is a welcome change. Some people may prefer upright, I don't know. But uh, for me, cleaner installation, always going to make me happy. But again... This is uh, something that I'm going to use on the duster. Can't wait to get it in. On the charger, I'm going to bring one in. Uh, if you're a guy that installs them or helps them, you know, helps your buddies or members of a car club make these conversions, this is something that you're going to tell every single one of them, buy that, it's going to save us time. <laughs> so uh, it's very, very nice. Again, typically, if I'm not mistaken, I think, uh, as best I remember, uh, 3 8 by 16, that's going to be what we need for the thread, but a 1 inch long bolt is what we would typically use for our thermostat housing 
uh, down into the water pump housing now. What I have here, I go stainless 3 8 16 by 2 inch. Obviously my thoughts, since it's a 1 inch spacer and I wanted a 1 inch bolt, there we go. You could probably get by with 1 and a half, 1 and 3 quarter. Don't hold me to that. I haven't gotten to install this yet. When we do the installation, uh, I will attempt to figure it all out. Also, I would prefer to have like a socket cap screw as opposed to the traditional bolt. But for the time being, it will work. And I've got to say with that black anodized finish, that stainless pops quite nice. It's a very good combination in my opinion. Uh, a lot of my AN plumbing is black and nickel just because I think it looks good. Particularly compared to the red and blue that I'm not a fan of. But, uh, the black and blue, blue and nickel, uh, it, there's all sorts of combinations. But this is a prototype, I should point that out. I'm not quite sure if he's going to just offer these exclusively in the black anodized finish or if it's going to be a situation where it's going to just be clear anodized, take advantage of the natural billet, uh, if they'll be offered in a myriad of colors, if it'll come in and if people want purple and sublime and all that stuff. No clue, but uh, they are currently slated for production. Uh, might even be in production by this point in time. That was a couple days ago I last talked to Andy. But uh, arengineering.com, that is his website. You can check them out there. More importantly, if you want to purchase them, you can also head over to Mancini Racing or Hughes Engines. Uh, those are two of the places that are selling uh, his products. Similarly, if you're into this sort of a thing, if you're wanting to, you know, kind of resto mod, update, upgrade your Mopar to sort of late model technologies, check out his site uh, because there's going to be probably some other things you're really going to like and uh, might throw on that order. <laughs> so, once again, this is actually uh, from Andy. Uh, at AR Engineering. Again, you probably know him as Andy F. or that guy that wrote those books that you have sitting on the shelf or out in the shop. And I can't tell you, it's a super simple part, but it is so, so much appreciated. And uh, it's one of those things you probably wanted it. And uh, you just, most people was like, yeah, you know, that'd be a great idea to put it there. But I don't know anyone with a water jet. I don't know who can mill these out for me. Hey, Andy took care of it. It's going to be on the market. My advice, pick it up, save yourself some hassle. And again, regardless of if you're all about the new ProFlow from Metal Brock, if you're sticking with Phytech, if you're building your own system with a Holly Dominator, if you're going Sniper, Stealth, uh, if you swear by Fast, whatever it is, uh, even if you go, what am I trying to think of? Mega Squirt, the old school, you know, that was really where EFI innovation was for years until Phytech kind of slashed the price. It was just these like crazy DIY people. But uh, regardless, whatever gets you going, whatever your setup is preferred, this is something that will work universally with them. All we're doing is putting the CTS in the correct position, mind you. And again, that's going to be vital for any aftermarket EFI. That said, can't thank Andy enough for sending this over to us, letting us check it out. Be on the lookout for the installation video. That thing is going to be coming soon. And uh, very, very nice piece. Uh, it's, I mean, the machining on it is fantastic. Uh, the anodize is good. And most importantly, it's just the function is what I'm concerned about here. And it's going to function beautifully. And a cleaner installation to boot. Plus, keep in mind, if this was located in the middle, right, you would always kind of be stuck with that. Whether it was, oh man, you know, anytime I have to change this, I'm going to have to pull the radiator hose. I can't get to it. With this being offset, uh, whether you have a little more free space on the left bank or the right bank, you can flip it in accordance. And uh, like I said, if you've got a 340 duster and a 440 duster, 440 duster, 340 duster, right? It's just little, little things like that being offset does make a difference and it is appreciated. At least when you get to the point of installing and realizing you can flip it and save yourself a little bit of headache with some clearance issues. So a very well thought out, fantastic part. I'm stoked to see brought to the market. And uh, with that said, I'm going to wrap it up, go make myself some pizza because it's Sunday night and I got to wake up and go to work in the morning. But uh, next chance I get to be out here, we're installing that bad boy. So be on the lookout for that. Once again, arengineering.com is a website. Check it out. There's probably some other cool things there you might want to put on your wish list as well. That said, if you have not subscribed, make sure you do that. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment. Let us know your thoughts on this. If you wish you would have had it, if you can't wait to get it, if you're going to buy seven of them, uh, if you run a shop and that's going to just save you tons of time and headache, uh, whatever it may be, let us know your thoughts. That said, you can find us on uh, Instagram, like us on Facebook, circle us on Google+, Plus, and of course, follow along on Twitter for all the latest. That said, I'll catch you back here for more from the shop.